Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this particular artwork of Bay from Hollow Life. So this was a case of me trying to figure out what I wanted to um, draw. I had a few references that I wanted to try to make, but I ended up not sticking with them. And that's kind of one of those things that um, when you're drawing, the process is constantly evolving. But this is a this is a case where I actually wanted to show you my ideas changing as I went. So we started out with kind of a uh, a softer, uh, more muted colored, um, but my issue was the reference I was using, I was borderline copying it. So it, it was kind of one of those things where I felt like it, it wasn't genuine and it wasn't me. So I just kind of shut that down, if that makes sense. Um, I was trying to figure out exactly the pose I was going for, the mood, the whole kit and caboodle. And that is super important whenever you are figuring out your pose, you're using references, you're figuring it all out. And sometimes the best thing you can do if you're not feeling an artwork or a pose that you're doing is just to throw it away. Um, I know that sometimes it can be hard whenever you're like, but there's something here. But the one thing I've discovered when it comes to my art and if my artwork turns out good or not, is I have to be honest with myself and say, do I feel like this artwork, does it make me happy? Do, does me drawing this particular artwork feel like I'm enjoying it? Am I vibing with it? Is everything about it making me happy? And if the answer is no, sometimes the best thing you can do is just stop fighting to make it perfect and instead start over. The best thing you can do as an artist to be productive is to learn to let go. If what you're doing is causing you frustration, you're not loving it, take a break, go outside, go for a walk, um, maybe watch some videos, watch a speed paint video, something to inspire you. And in all honesty, that in itself can be the catalyst to inspire you and help you figure out what you want to make. So that's my advice to you. If you're not vibing with an artwork or you're struggling too hard to make it good and you want it to be perfect, but it's just not working, sometimes you just got to be honest with yourself and say, it's not good enough and I need to move on. So even though I will say this artwork, even though I loved it a whole lot, it did not do well on Twitter compared to my usual stuff. And that's okay. Usually within three days, if my artwork does really, really well or is kind of provocative in terms of a sexual nature, it um it tends to get at least 2,000 likes. This particular artwork, even though I really, really enjoyed it, um, it did not do so well. It only got 200 likes in three days. And that just shows me that's not like Ludwig and all these people online say it the best. And that is. If you are blaming the algorithm for why an artwork or your video didn't do well, you need to replace the word algorithm with audience. Just because you like it, it's, it's not the algorithm's fault that it didn't get pushed. The reality is nobody was stopping to look at it and like it. And that means that you didn't make something that people liked. And that can be a really harsh lesson because it can hurt. It can really hurt. You put your everything into it. You loved it. You thought it was great and you wanted to show it off. And then it just doesn't get anywhere. Um, I see it many times with people online, especially on Twitter. Um, I've always had a problem with artists making um, whining posts. For example, um, if you're on Twitter, you've seen it before, right? You've seen the, the same post every time from smaller artists. And it is things along the lines of this type of thing. Draws an OC. One like or no likes. Draws fan art or NSFW. Thousands of likes. And they, they're they like, you know, I draw good too. And it's like, well, first off, that is a very, very childish mindset. The reality that I've come to find is that these people are not 
quite there yet as an artist. They aren't they aren't at the level of skill needed to explode online because it really is a skill-based system. In fact, my own YouTube videos, um, technically, I could probably do more to make my videos interesting. The fact that I don't have videos that blow up doesn't mean that I'm not good at drawing. What it means is that my videos aren't interesting. And that is a skill issue. I literally refuse to put in the amount of work use I need to actually explode because I, in a weird way, don't want to explode on YouTube. I'm, I'm comfortable with where I am. I'm comfortable with my comment section. I'm happy that I don't have a bunch of hate in my comments. And in a weird way, I don't want to change that. So I'm happy with what I'm doing now. It is a similar thing with art. If you are going on Twitter and you are posting things that aren't of a certain skill level, it won't get attention. If you post something that, even if you aren't skilled, let's, let's dial it back a bit. Let's say you aren't skilled. That doesn't mean that you can't make something successful. The goal is you need to make something that meshes well with an audience. Um, it's the reason why fan art does so well. It's because you're making something with an established audience, and if you truly understand that audience, you can get attention. You just have to make what they want. The trick as an artist or a creator is to make what you want and what an audience wants. It's the reason I'm constantly drawing Hololive. I've had people on YouTube criticize and say, like, hey, you're probably not going to explode on YouTube because you're only making Hololive artworks. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to make, and I'm okay with not exploding. So all this to say, your goal is to make something an audience wants. And it can take a very long time to figure out what an audience wants. Um, for example, there's a reason why most of my artwork is very um, risque. It's because the Hololive and VTuber community is a more risque um, venture. Most people, whether it be the livers or the artists, want to make something that's a little more provocative and a little more risque, and the audience wants that. So I've hit the point recently where I'm skilled enough to actually make something that catches people's attention, and I'm giving the audience what they want. The reason why this particular artwork didn't do well was not because it's not well made. It's because it is not giving the audience what they originally wanted with my artwork. Most of my artwork is usually very, as I keep saying, risque and more provocative. Because this artwork wasn't, people didn't mesh with it. And that's why it didn't do well. So I've been online for years. It took me um, back. In fact, if, if some of you uh, who have probably been following me for years, you might not have known. I used to be really active in the Brony fandom back in 2013. And I think my most popular uh, creative endeavor I ever did in the Pony fandom was a comic. And this comic got half a million likes, and it became well-known in, um, in the Pony fan base. Now, I will say, when, when things started happening and there were like, like terrible like, stories coming out of the convention, I kind of noped out of the fan base because I'm like, yeah, this is no longer for me. I'm kind of going to bow out. And I started going back to my roots, which was making anime, which is what I loved. And I, I kind of experimented, figured out what I wanted to do. I didn't know yet, and I didn't know what audience I wanted. So around this time, I was drawing gotcha artwork, like Azure Lane, Arc Knights for a while. And then around that time when that first came out, I started noticing VTubers on Japanese um, social media websites. And I was like, holy crap, this is really fun and entertaining. I want to draw this. And then one day, years ago, I decided to draw Mori Calliope, and she liked it. And that was such an addicting feeling that I pushed it, and I kept doing it. And I learned that I loved it, and my, the audience that I had loved it. The livers themselves loved it. And everything fell into place. And then in about... Three years, I three to four years, I went from fifty followers on Twitter to now I have thirty one thousand. And 
I feel like I'm finally figuring things out. So this was my little crash course for you into how building an audience and everything works. I hope you liked the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.